Former President Trump said that he has been treated worse than every other president before him, including Abraham Lincoln. What are you talking about? <laughs> are you mad because you went to the theater and had to watch the whole play? <laughs> Lincoln not only got murdered, but they also put him on the only money that everybody hates to get. Let's acknowledge it is impossible to assess what Biden has done at the border without looking at what he inherited. Trump campaigned on high-octane xenophobia, and his policies reflected that, from large-scale family separation to attacking DACA to his so-called Remain in Mexico policy, which led to massive encampments of would-be asylum seekers south of the border. I want to talk about racism at the very heart of MAGA. Now, many of my Republican friends and family would completely dispute this fact, but I think they're just not really paying attention. What do they call it that I have? Trump derangement syndrome? Yeah. I don't think the symptoms of that disease are what they think they are. The conservative movement is in a state of panic and disarray right now after a string of electoral and legal defeats. Their front runner for the nomination is currently under indictment and facing more investigations. They keep losing big races in key swing states from the 2022 Senate races to the Wisconsin Supreme Court election in April. And now their leading propaganda network has been forced to pay out a massive defamation settlement and cut ties with their top rated host. And of course, Donald Trump was the, the pioneer of all this, starting with his very first day as a presidential candidate when he came down that dopey escalator at Trump Tower and called Mexican immigrants rapists. Title 42, which allows the U.S. to kick migrants out of the country with shocking ease. And we've talked about it before, but just as a refresher, it's not actually an immigration law at all. It is an arcane public health order aimed at preventing the spread of communicable diseases. The Trump administration implemented it in March of 2020, invoking it as a safety precaution intended to prevent COVID-19 from spreading through Border Patrol stations. But the truth is, long before COVID, its use had been floated by Stephen Miller, a child's art to the prompt, draw Squidward from memory. In fact, the invocation of Title 42 was referred to as a Stephen Miller special. He was all over that, a sentence I truly hope no one has to speak or hear ever again. And Miller has bragged about Title 42's... The principle of it is very simple, which is that during a pandemic, if you come into this country, your very presence here, if you enter unlawfully, is a threat to our public health. Full stop. You go home. First, I'm pretty sure if you played the sound of Stephen Miller's voice in a maternity ward, a newborn infant would instinctively say, despite not having any knowledge of the English language, shut the fuck up. <laughs> because that threat to our public health line was bullshit. While Trump claimed that the order originated with the CDC, one former health official said that they were effectively forced to implement it, adding it was either do it or get fired. In fact, the CDC scientist said there was no evidence Title 42 would actually slow the spread of coronavirus. But the reason Trump seized on it is pretty obvious. It's more than just racism for racism's sake. It's racism for power's sake. The hatred is just salsa. Pardon the almost a pun. To ban Muslims from traveling the United States, a billion of them, referred to African nations as asshole countries. This is a guy that said that a group of non-white progressive American congresswomen should go back to the countries they came from and let a crowd in a chant of that, more or less. The sense of panic at Fox is apparently so intense that other hosts who pushed the big lie about the 2020 election are worried they could also get fired. Maria Bartiromo and Janine Pirro, two longtime hosts and Donald Trump allies, have told friends they're concerned they could be sacked next. Oh my God, it's like a horror movie, except in this movie, the axe murderer is a 92-year-old Australian man, and <laughs> instead of chasing his victims, he just makes them come to him. Ah, pick up some speed and run to this chainsaw, you <laughs> This kind of stuff's been going on for a long time. Trump didn't invent it. He damn sure didn't invent racism. But oh my goodness, how he has made it into a fine, fine sorbet. Mostly made of cow shit, but a sorbet. A judge presiding over his fraud case against his bogus university, saying he could not be impartial because he's Mexican. All of it just 
bog standard, appalling, disgusting racism, right? And he got away with it with very few consequences. Though, I have to say, I do think it helped turn him into such a reviled figure with a favorability rating of just 25%, according to one recent poll. So it's not like he's winning enormous popularity contests with this shtick. Sure, there's all the talk on Tucker's show constantly about how dirty those people are. Cleanliness is next to godliness. After all, when Tucker talks about those people not being like us, we know exactly what he means. And anybody else watching does too. They don't want to admit it because it means that they have a little bit of acceptance for racism. So they chalk it up to something else. Well, it's his faith he's talking about. Nothing in the Bible says that racism is okay. My God. Jesus was Aramaic. Uh, Aramea, just for people who don't read the Bible. That was in Ethiopia. Just so y'all know. He was a black Jew. And then, never mind. Seems like an insane place to work. As we told you last week, Fox reportedly has a dossier of alleged dirt on Tucker Carlson, and he's not the only one. They reportedly do it to all their on-air personalities. One ex-Fox News anchor lamented any talent like Tucker would have a lot of things, other people complaining, they encourage it, and then just keep it on file. It's just a classic dirty trick. And another departed Fox News host added, it's classic Fox. That's insane. But Donald Trump had a partner in this same project of bringing racism out in the open. That man, of course, is the now disgraced ex-cable news host, Tucker Carlson, who once he took over for the disgraced, disgraced ex-cable news host before him, I know it's hard to keep track, used his hour to regularly spew pretty blatant, hateful racist views. He attacks immigrants, for example, because they make America, quote, dirtier. He referred to the majority black city of Baltimore as one of the worst places in the Western Hemisphere, calling it a little bit of Haiti in the Mid-Atlantic. He also, while he was doing that, claimed that white supremacy is a hoax. What's white supremacy? What are you talking about? Define it for me. But behind closed doors, people like Laura Ingram were raised that way. I think the pathology comes from familial soil, and I've used that term in the past. So my father was a Nazi sympathizer. Uh, there was a copy of Mein Kampf on the living room bookshelf. Uh, he was abusive. He was an alcoholic. So we are in a we are in a in, in a family of anger, anger, abuse. And I think that is what has happened to my sister. People say, well, how did you turn out so different? So in my life, I found love. And my sister has not found love. Uh, something that she had done while she was at Dartmouth. So she was the editor of the Dartmouth Review, which is a conservative rag paper, she and Dinesh D'Souza. And it was uh, before technology, so there were no you know, phones, cell phones, or you know, computers. But she sent her reporters in undercover and they took the names of the people that were in that gay alliance meeting and they published them in the paper. And in this blog that I read, it said that one kid actually committed suicide. Now, I, don't, I can't verify that, but when I saw that, I sent her an email and I said, Laura, is this true? And she wrote back, it was, it was legal language, I do not respond to blah, blah, blah. And so in my heart, I knew she was probably, she's guilty. And so that's when I really pulled away. And it was, of course, when uh, she went full blown Trump, you know, in 2016, that I could not uh, stay quiet any longer. And I'm just kind of calling out hypocrisy as I see it, her statements, her meanness, the way she's smearing people. I mean, you look, it all started with LeBron James, you know, taking the knee and her saying to him, just shut up and dribble. I mean, I don't understand that type of person that attacks like this. People like Tucker Carlson. And seen here recording a hostage video from the inside of a Bass Pro Shop. Are open about it. White supremacy, that's the problem. This is a hoax. There's no evidence that white supremacists were responsible for what happened on January 6th. That's a lie. We have a moral obligation to admit the world's poor, they tell us, even if it makes our own country poorer and dirtier and more divided. So it might be time for Joe Biden to let us know what Kentaji Brown Jackson's LSAT score was. What else did you do in the LSATs? I mean, everyone wants to make a racial issue out of it. Ooh, the you know white replacement theory. No, no, no. This is a voting rights question. 
I have less political power because they're importing a brand new electorate. Why should I sit back and take that? We're still not precisely sure how George Floyd died. Very few unarmed black men are killed by white cops these days. Where's George Floyd when you need him? The only job training program this administration has gotten behind in two and a half years is getting black people to sell more weed in the city. Um, anyway, enough of that bull oh, I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> Kids are watching. Enough of that nonsense. The New York Times concluded, after analyzing over a thousand episodes of his program, that Tucker, quote, constructed what may be the most racist show in the history of cable news, and I think that judgment was likely correct. And he was obviously not hiding any of this. This wasn't done in some secret back room. It was the program, readily accessible, night in, night out, to anyone with a cable box, including the Fox News executives. People have been writing and talking about it for years, which is why it's a little hard to believe that the thing that ultimately did Tucker in at Fox was one private racist text message. Well, today, the Times published that secret message. I'm not gonna read you the entire text, which is a long missive that Tucker sent to one of his producers and life is short. It was the day after the January 6th attack on the Capitol. He talks about watching a video and rooting for Trump supporters to beat up and even kill an alleged member of Antifa before realizing there was something horrible about that impulse, whatever. <laughs> the key line is this, quote, it was three against one at least. Jumping a guy like that is dishonorable, obviously. It's not how white men fight. It was three MAGAs against one Antifa, and that's dishonorable. That's not the way white people fight. That's what he said. I wonder what he meant by that. Hmm. Because I guess other than white people would fight in a dishonorable way. Maybe I'm just a libtard. Doesn't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Republicans don't know dirty tricks. How about this one? Okay, give it so to they, me. So they went through East Harlem, which is all Hispanic, and they gave out, they gave out, they gave out little cards, and the card said, if you come to vote, make sure you have your green card because INS are picking up illegals. Oh my gosh. So the, they spread they it all the over the Hispanic. The this motherfucker readily admits it. And that, that's the way we kept down the Hispanic mm. vote. This is what we don't do. Not the legals vote, the illegal vote. Yeah, yeah. people don't have yeah. the right to vote. The illegal vote. Yeah. yeah. Can I, the Hispanic yeah. illegal vote, which takes away the Hispanic legal vote. Not just designed for the illegals, but every person also in that house. Approached all of this with his signature clarity. The immigration laws are horrible. We're doing an incredible job. We're doing a record-breaking job, but we have bad laws. You know, when you have bad laws, you can do good, but you can do a lot better if you had good laws. OK. I mean, that is total gibberish, but if you look at what he's saying closely there, you'll find it's also, and this is true, a haiku. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding, it absolutely isn't, but wouldn't it be great if it was? If that buffoon was capable of accidental beauty, but it's not, and he isn't, so we're back to square one. So now? Republicans get to pick who they want. Guess who they're gonna pick? Same phenomenon with Donald Trump. You know, he would call for immigrants to go back to where they came from over and over in public. And then that would be eclipsed by a report that he says something equally horrible like shithole countries behind the scenes. And I understand that inclination to give more weight to the words spoken in secret, but it, it has fueled this sort of pervasive commentary about the MAGA Republican Party. We hear this a lot which is basically this, that people like Donald Trump and Tucker Carlson, who are peddling this demagoguery and bigotry and hate and rank white supremacy, are doing so as a sort of transactional grift, right? Now, that's not wholly wrong. Clearly, they've both made a lot of money, gained a lot of power by doing it, but it's an incomplete telling of the story <laughs> because the evidence we have proves they are real true believers. They're not saying anything in public or in private that they do not believe. They actually hold racist views. Now, a lot of my Republican friends and family may say that they're gonna pick Trump not based on that. They think that's horrible. They're gonna pick Trump for economic reasons. You know, it's better for the economy. Yeah. You know, Hitler was really, really good 
for the economy in Germany. What the fuck are you talking about? Comforting, I think, in a strange way, to liberals particularly, that to think this is all cynical, they don't really believe that it's all just a grift. You can't let that idea mask the truly horrible reality. Do not discount how many people in positions of power and influence, particularly in the modern MAGA right wing, genuinely, sincerely, honestly and earnestly hold utterly loathsome views and how much those views drive our politics. That is a bullshit excuse to ignore racism, anti-Semitism, hatred of those other than you. Now I urge you to watch my next video. I don't know if it's the next one. It's one of these. Because there is a different perspective on that. And I would like to share it with you. But this damn video is too long and people are getting bored. I'm Zachariah Lone Star Liberal.